Hi, okay, in this video, we're going to learn on a counter, which is under module 8. So, I hope that you already uh, master in your module 6, module 7, and then after that, you can continue with your module 8. Please bear in your mind that module 8 is one of the modules or the chapter that will be covered in your final exam. So final exam, there will be uh, from module 6 until your module 9. So please make sure you know what uh, will cover in your final exam. So under module uh, under module 8, uh, it will be divided into two, which is module 8E and module 8P. So, there is two videos that I will be separated in both. So, first of all, we're going to look into our counter. So, you can see over here, this is the content uh, on our module uh, 8A, which is asynchronized counter. What we're going to learn on 2-bit. 3 bit, 4 bit, and B, C, D decades on our unsynchronized counter. While for synchronized counter, similar also, we're going to cover our uh, 2 bit, 3 bit, 4 bits, and B, C, D decades also. And then after that, we're going to look into our up or down counter. Uh, cascade counter design the as design the synchronized counter and lastly the counter decoding so the objective this one you can read and go through by yourself what you suppose to understand what you uh, need to achieve at the end of this module and etc so this is the introduction part. Counter is divided into two, which is unsynchronized and also synchronized. Similar also with our learning that we have synchronized class and asynchronized class. Uh, so there is a variety of counter based on construction. Uh, counter is type of sequential logic circuit. There, uh, in general, there are two categories of counter: asynchronized and synchronized. So, what categories can be divided uh, with several criteria? Uh, there is three criteria. First of all, we're going to look into a counter trigger, and then, and then count and count directions so under clock trigger you can see you can see over here you have two type which is positive h and negative h under count there will be a binary and decade and under counter directions up down or up or down so this one is just for your understanding and you need to know what type of a counter that you're going to learn so in our previous lecture in our uh, previous class you already learned on s r d j k t flip-flop which is i basically said that flip-flop is just like similar to your what uh, basic gate right which is quite a uh, uh, easy to understand so I hope that uh, you can do well in that uh, particular uh, what lectures and also flip flop only the different on the behavior and the operation this flip flop can be connected together to perform certain operations so in following lectures we will use the flip flop to construct so you're going to combine together uh, to construct a variety of counter so all this counter you're going to combine uh, you're going to develop by using a flip flop in addition we will also learn the methods of uh, 
analy <laughs> analy <laughs> analysis analyzing the difference between type of a counter so over here you can see that we did uh, some recap on our sequential circuit you already look go through these uh, sequential circuit and the combination logic circuit and you have a memory so it called as a sequential circuit isn't it so basically uh, there is nothing much on, on the difference between uh, sequential circuit and also combination logic circuit uh, only there is a memory on that and you can go through all this this is just a theory for you to understand if there is an important key i will also uh inform you in the big uh in a in each of our uh slide or oh, not a slide uh every chapter in here so every point if there is a uh, very important for you to understand i will uh, point it out so type of sequential circuit so this one as you know you have the synchronized and the synchronized so again i get repeat i repeat so i hope if let's say uh, there is a question asking about what type of synchronized circuits i hope that you can easily un answer it so under synchronized it use clock input to synchronize the circuit operation so as long as you use synchronized input to synchronize your operations so it call as synchronized while for unsynchronized circuit operation is based on the message signal passing from one stage to another so this is not uh, going to have any clock pulse so you can refer also the block diagram you can see this is the synchronized which is you have the input level and the output of course but you have the trigger which is called as a clock while for unsynchronized this one you already look also in your previous chapter you have the synchronized logic circuit but all is depend on the signal input and you have the output pulse also so there is no any other trigger like a clock pulse in the unsynchronized so now this is just a recap what we already learned in our previous class in our previous uh, module so now we're going to look into directly to our counters so a counter is any sequential circuit that goes through a precise sequence of stage upon the application of input pulse. So a sequence of state in a counter may follow a binary count or any other sequence. So if you can see over here, this one is follow the binary count you can see over here it start from zero this one is one two uh three this one is it this is not two okay this one is not following the binary count this one is other sequence so you can see over here this one is one this one is three if you convert it directly from uh from what from decimal to from binary to decimal this is two this one is four to six so what is happening over here is you can see the uh the changes it's only in the pit i can see over here uh, from this it's going to be one so it replace similar it's follow only this one will be changed so now from one is going to be three and etc but the most important what you need to know is uh, the sequence of state 
in a counter can or may follow a binary count you can follow the 0 1 2 3 until 9 or you can also have other sequence so this is other sequence example you can have 0 1 3 and then back to 2 and then this one is 4 7 this one is 5 and 6 is it 6 to the power 4 4 so the state is changed by the input pulse so the input pulse count pulse may be clock pulse or they may originate from the external source so may occur at the precise intervals of time or a random so i hope that you understand the sentences uh, similar to your flip-flop uh, your clock or your outputs uh, will be only change by using a clock pulse or trigger uh, it can uh, it should be from the external but it may be a cure at the precise intervals of time or any random time sometimes uh, it follow a sequence like this which is uh, but sometimes maybe it's like this this is a clock maybe <laughs> should be the same height uh, only that uh, it is random it's same height okay as long as you know this is clock then you know only the different I think on the time sometimes it's random or sometimes it is uh, uh, intervals precise so counter are generally make up of flip flop and the combination also with the, your logic gate can retain an output state after the input condition which brought about the state have been removed so classify as a sequential circuit can have many more it's than hours. two states uh, with where is my microphone so you can have many more uh, than than two state as long as you have two state uh, that's the minimum of course then uh, the value of state is expressed as the multi-digit uh, binary number which is only zero and one are usually derived from the output of your internal flip-flop that can make up the counter so the state number i hope that you can easily read it and of course you're going to understand so the main type of use for your flip-flop jk flip-flop t flip-flop and d flip-flop so this is the uh, type of flip-flop that usually use for your counter use of counter what is the use for your counter so normally you're going to use the counter uh, in uh, event tax place which is a occur occurrence of event to be count is represented by the input signals to the counter. So this is an example how the block diagram look like. So what is the purpose? So this is also you can see over here the counter you can also use in the bomb. You can go through and read it one by one. So we're going to directly see the criteria of our counter. So this one, uh, I'm not going to uh, repeat again because of course you know that there is two types, synchronized and asynchronous. And then there is a counting sequence, modulus and whether the counter repeat the counting sequence or not. So asynchronized or synchronized, whether the clock come from the same source or not. So synchronized all clock from the same source. 
but unsynchronized clock for each flip-flop come from a different source. So this is the big difference between synchronized and unsynchronized. <coughs> so this is the example, the block diagram or the circuit combinations uh, between several D flip-flop uh, which is uh, let on combined together to get the synchronized counter. You can see there is input of D and you have also the input of your clock. And while well, the below part over here you can see this is the unsynchronized counter for your flip flop. This is the JK flip flop. So you can see you have JK input and also the clock. Uh, you can see this is the uh, negative edge. So counter they have the counting sequence up down or up down. You can see up or down you need directions which is you need to pick uh, any ones whether it is up or down the counter sequence only one direction or one way but up down it can be have a bi direction but as i already mentioned it is mathematic terms which is two so you have two directions uh, of the count can be changed during the operations because of limited work length, the count sequence is limited. So for n, n bit counter, the range of counts is 0. And then until 2, the power of n minus 1. So the count sequence usually repeats itself. So normally it's going to be in loop because it's going to repeat, repeat, repeat and repeat. When counting up, the counter sequence goes in the manner of, let's say, 0, 1, 2, 3, until to the power of n minus 2. And then it's continue back to the power of n minus 1 until you reach back to the uh, 0 over here. Let's say you count from 0 to, let's say, 9. I give just an example. And then you're going to uh, loop 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 at 9. And then you continue it back to 0 and continue until uh, unlimited uh, looping. When counting down, it's similar also. You're going to be, let's say, from uh, 2 to the power of n minus 1 and then to the power of n minus 2, minus 3 and etc until you found zero and continue back uh, repeat the loop so this is the example you can see over here this one is three bit up counter over here and this is three bit down counter from zero to one and then after that you can see it's jump to two three four five six and seven while over here it's starting from zero and then direct to seven six five four three two one and then look back to zero uh, seven six and etc so the complements of counter uh, before that you can see you can apply it to the power of n n is three because it is three bytes so you have three to the power of three is eight and then you minus 1. You're going to get a 7. So 7 is the maximum. From 0 to, let's say over here, from 0 to 7. Okay, next, the complements of the counter sequence count in reverse direction. If the counter output, uh, I think this one, 
you can see that uh, this one is the three bits out counter and complements of the counter you already learn on how the complements are so everything's on the complements is going to be like a converter all for the counter so you can see if zero is going to convert to one zero it convert to one zero to convert to one and etc so this one under modus or mod mod the number of states of the counter have can have uh let's like say mod4 four state which are following a state is zero one two three or maybe you have the mod9 so you have zero from it because you have nine in all together mod4 you have you have four states which is starting from zero until three so this is state one state two state three and then step four similar to also if let's say you have mode nine you have state one until step nine the maximum number you can also apply the similar uh, equation which is maximum count usually to the power of n minus 1 where n is the number of the ff of or for the transcript sequence the maximum count will be uh, less than to the power of n minus 1 while the fourth is under repeat of sequential sequence so whether this counter repeat the counting sequence or not you can see there is two type whether it is recycle or saturate under recycle if the counter goes back to the first count after the maximums of count while you have the saturate the counter repeat the maximum count if the count up or repeat the minimum if count down so there is a uh, several uh, like conditions apply and the saturate so that's uh, on under our synchronized counter while under unsynchronized you can see over here uh, you will look into the ripple rip, ripple counter so n AC is one in which the flip flop whether the counter do not change state at exactly the same time because they do not have the common clock pulse, right? The clock input of NAC is always connected only to the LSP FF and AC also known as a ripple counter. So you can read, go through, understand it, it and this is the examples of your AC or asynchronized counter. You use this one is a uh, combination of two JK flip flop. You can have the JK flip flop with the input of high and then you have the clock as the trigger. Comparison of asynchronous and synchronized, you can see the difference on the clock connection. This one is asynchronized, this one is synchronized. So you can see all votes on the difference. What is the difference? Is synchronized, you're going to use the similar clock for both flip flop. So the input will be similar. But for your unsynchronized, the clock will be used the output of the previous clock. So the second clock will be depending on your output outputs of your previous uh, flat flop. So that's the uh, difference between synchronized and unsynchronized also. So you have the variety of comparisons now and the synchronized and synchronized. So that's the bold red color between the different between clock connections. So now you can see over here this one is under unsynchronized counter clock. Uh, the most important is you can see of uh, of course there is a positive H. You can also refer to this 
and this unsynchronized counter is slow because uh, the case get clocking scheme which is you need to wait until you get the output then you're going to trigger your next flip flop that's why it's uh, a bit slow so the clock source ripple from stage to state so one state and then second state third state fourth state all need to wait the output first then it's going to trigger the second and then it's going to trigger the third, fourth and etc. The ripple effect is similar to the ripple carry adder circuit. So if you still remember the ripple carry adder, you're going to get the carry from your previous adder, isn't it? So it's quite similar. Uh, it's similar, not quite. So this one is the uh, count up and count down. So you can see uh, there is a positive H and negative H uh, different on the bubbles of course. And uh, counter up you can see uh, what is the difference on the combinations of circuit is on the counter up you can see that uh, the output will be used the Q bar. While countdown is going to connect to your queue. So that's the big difference you can see. Let's say you were given only the circuit. You need to justify whether it is positive H or negative H. Or maybe it's whether it's counter up or counting down. So you need to check on the output connection. So that's. But you can see that uh, it's similar whether uh, for counter up and counter down, it's going to similar for positive and negative and vice versa. Okay, so you need to justify first whether it is positive H or negative H, then you can also justify counter up or counter down. So this is the summary of your unsynchronized counter. The circuit connection almost the same where external clock connected to LSB flip-flop, which is your FF of course. And second clock for each FF come from the previous FF, which is flip-flop. Expect for the first flip-flop. So only the first first flip-flop uh, is going to connect directly to your clock and the second clock uh, signal sorry si clock signal while for your second uh, clock will be uh, the signal from your output previous flip-flop and this touch for on five you can read it by yourself it's uh just understandings on the uh, summarization fit for your synchronized counter so i hope that you can uh, pause your video first and then you continue with this count up to beat ec or unsynchronized counter so you have the positive each assumes that q initial is low And this one is the output of your Q. So based on your clock. So this is your first clock. So as synchronized for your first clock. This one is your JK. It's directly connect to high. It means that you need to check your true table for 1, 1. What is going to be the output for your Q and Q bar. So over here you can see that uh, over here you have also uh, the output for Q and Q bar and you can see over here what happened to your Q and also Q bar it's going to be toggle from here to here until your second clock and similar until the rest going to be toggle and then after that you can see of course your q bar will be the node or uh, the complements or the toggle versions of your q isn't it so that's why it will be 
like this the output and after that it's going to be your clock for your second so over here it is still positive so positive edge you're going to pick this one this going to be your clock this is going to be your positive clock for the second so uh, assuming that uh, your Q1 first is going to be low and then it's going to be toggles for your bar uh, positive each positive each toggle back then you get this output for your Q1 if let's say there is continue you're going to pick this one as the clock and i think over here let's say there is another so this part will be a second clock so is it okay uh, i think it is not too high if let's say you have any question please uh, ask me you can whatsapp me you can ask me when in our class So please take note, uh, let's see over here, this one is under recycle, that's why your clock pulse 4 you are going to recycle back. The transitions of the counter from your final state to the original one. So I hope that you can try this exercise. Uh, this one is just a basic exercise. I uh, think it's quite easy if you still have a strong understanding on your flip flop. So please try to do this exercise and try to get the output. And this is the table for your counter. And you can also draw in the stage. So what is the difference between this uh, table and also your state diagram is only on this one di under your timing diagram or state diagram. You're going to ha use only the um, binary which is 0, 1, 0, 1. Basically it's similar. You can see also uh, at your pulse. Uh, it is state 1, state 2, state 3 and state 4. 1, 2, 3 and 4 and etc. But basically this one is your output. First output, uh, you should be have four, uh, 4 state only. It will be continue back to the up. 1, 2, 3... And then over here it will be zero and it's going to continue back. You have one a uh, zero and then one, two, and then three, and then you're going to repeat again. So this is your uh, value of your Q zero one and then Q one. This is zero zero. It means zero zero one. It is one one zero over here. One one over here. State one, state two, state three, state four, and then it's going to continue. So this is another example. You can also try it. I think on the waveform, it's not too big issue because we already try to do many exercise in your previous uh, module. So I guess it's quite easy, only that maybe you are the first timer look on the table, state table and also state diagram. So you need to know basically it's just similar state table, you just uh, pick it out from your timing diagram. You have one one over here, mm, this one is your output Q0 and then this one is Q1. If you still remember at your full adder, this is your output one uh, using the, this one is MSB and lastly the LSB. 
So you have one 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 zero zero one one one. Then after that, you going to replace it into the state table. That's why you have one one. You can see the first one is one one, and then you have one zero. Similar one zero, and then you have zero one, and lastly zero zero, and you change each into your stat diagram. So under your stat stat diagram, you have one 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 zero zero one and one one, and you will lock it. So that's under your counter two. Now you're going to look into uh, uh let me continue. Okay. Uh you're going to look into your count up three bits AC and synchronized counter. So it's just similar if you have the strong basic understanding on two bits. You add another version of your flip flop, and the clock will be connected to your previous output of your cuba. If let's say it is counter up under your positive each, and you're going to see uh this one will be your first clock. This is the initial clock, and then you're going to get your output. This output uh going to pick the Q bar. Uh, where is your Q bar over here? It's not given. But from your Q bar, should we give your Q bar? So your Q bar will be a uh, toggle. Maybe I can draw it. Okay, I give you like this. Uh, this is your cuba. You should be have uh, your cuba. Then you can refer to your second clock and etc. Okay, so this is your initial clock. Your first clock over here under your FF1 is going to be your Q0 bar. For your Q0 bar, you're going to pick the positive edge. It will be like this. Then every positive edge, you can see you going to be changed in your signals for your output Q1. Only at the positive edge. Now, you need to have your Q1 bar also. Then your Q1 bar going to be your positive edge uh, clock. Then you going to get your Q2 uh, this one is the terminal graph I think you can try it from here and whether you can get the output similar or not so this is the example that we have the three bits and we look into step by step what happened but this one is the different example because this one is a negative H flip-flop. So you're going to use your Q. Uh, I, no, this one is should be clocked down. Ah, uh, yes. I didn't see the clock down. Okay, I thought it's similar under our clock up. But of course, it's true. It should be the clock down. Because you can see over here the output is connected to your cuba with the negative each, so it's going to be uh, countdown. So first one, you're going to have your cuba Q output whenever only your uh, oh sorry, this one should be wrong because it is negative H. You're going to have like this. So maybe we can just direct uh, see the output or oh, it's not showing the clock. So suppose you know the negative edge will be like this, isn't it? So this one under negative edge. 
then you have the q and let me go back to the equation uh where is the jk negative of course uh it's not given the initial q Mm, we assume it as low first or this one is going to be low and upon upon this negative uh, we're going to trigger its toggles because our input uh, JK flip flop it also not given you the input of JK JK supposed going to be mentioned because you asked you were asked to draw the counter right so this one it should be high so if high then going to be toggle because it is one value one one for your j and k so it's going to toggle like this uh negative ish it's going to be ugly okay like this and etc now you have the first output see your first output is what is most beautiful okay now as i mentioned you need to have your cuba so your cuba we going to be your next clock clock so you're going to use your negative part this part this part this part and etc so that's why you can see over here you're going to only change whenever it's going to be a negative cloud then your q1 going to have your q1 bar because you have another three bits for three bit you're going to have like this right so you need to have your q bar then you're going to trigger with your negative clock again that's why you're going to change only this part then you just uh draw back uh whatever inside over here you have one 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 and then one one zero we have another one, zero, one, and etc. That's why after that you're going to come up with the state table. After that you're going to draw the state diagram. Is it right? So this one. So now you're going to uh, look into your come up for bit AC. You can see over here. Uh, if you can see that you have eight another flip flop. Only the difference bit with that. So if you can understand two bit AC, of course you can do the three bits AC, four bit AC, and etc. Just very easy. So please try to do this exercise so now after you try this exercise we're going to move our uh, to our unsynchronized decad counter so under unsynchronized decad counter you can see that your maximum number possible states is different which is to the power of n equations rather than a previous one cycle so you're going to have to the power of n minus one now you have to the power of n however uh, it can be designed less than to the power of n also one common modules of counter with thundercate sequence is 10 decade counter it's called as decade counter it will be forced the counter to cycle before going through all its normal state so before let's say your normals that have to the power of n right but before it's going to come out to here it's directly go back to your initial so uh with the decade two four six eight ten so the cat ten you have ten then you go back 
So unsynchronized clock module stand. So this is the unsynchronized module clock 10, which is you add another decoder. One decoder you add at the end of your in flip flop and it connect to your previous output of your flip flop. So decay 10 1010 with NAND gate and connect to the output to clear inputs of and flip flop. So normally you can see that uh, you know what is the value of your decoder. So this one is the decoder design inside this part. So one zero decoder. So you need to know that there is a bar over here Q zero and then Q one. That's why you will get one zero one zero for your decoder design. So this is the example. So note that there is a glitch in Q one. Why there is a glitch? The reason of this glitch is that Q one must first go high before the count. 1 0 can be decoded several nanosecond after the decoding gate goes low so it is nanosecond where uh, basically you barely can see in your counter but it's there so this one is a uh, 12 module 1 2 which is 12 you can see this is 8 this is 4 uh, you add together you get 12 so that's why the decoder design is different later on you can try one by one the exercise only that this is showing you the difference between uh, module 10 and module 12 so still you have the glitch uh, so what is the advantage and disadvantages of EC so you can go through one by one the advantages and disadvantages of your AC. So the effect of propagations of delay of AC also. You can have a look on this. Uh, this one is more to your theory part. And then your cases. Uh, we going to, if let's say you didn't understand, you need to ask me in your class. So this is the equations that you need to use for you to get uh, the maximum operation frequency under uh, your scenario given. So this is the equation. I guess you need to also check your modules for the equation. Because at first in our slide there is no similar also what I give you and provided in our notes in e-learning. Uh, so please make sure you try to look into it before we go to our module 8B. So in this video until only here later on I will come out with uh, another module B video. Uh, I will also plug in the video uh, link at the uh, description. Okay, thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye.